Okay, so jokes aside, Anna actually needs a big buff right now because she's in a really awkward and somewhat of a terrible spot where I can't believe I'm saying this, but she's kind of become more of a niche pick than the go-to support that was actually very good. So how do we get to this point? All this type of stuff is what I'm going to be talking about first, and then I'm going to be talking about my solution. So to start us off, as everybody knows, we are now in a world where there is a DPS passive that reduces healing by 15%, and we're also in a world right now where, you know, we have the 250 HP bars and things like that. Now, this new game state has benefited uh, a lot of supports in a good way, and then it's kind of harmed other supports uh, in another way. For example, Iliari got hurt by the changes in the game quite a bit, simply because of the fact that uh, because the HP pools got bigger and her whole thing was to two-tap people, she was struggling quite a bit to actually, you know, function as a support, and it certainly didn't help that her healing is a little bit more on the lower side and it's impacted more by the bigger HP pools and the DPS passive. Then on the flip side of things, you know, you have a character like Moira who's flourishing now more than ever because the way her playstyle works and the way the game currently functions, she still has really high healing output, a very powerful ultimate that charges very quickly, good damage output, is able to follow up on the DPS passive that's applied by the DPS really well. You know, she's mobile, she can stay alive, you know, she's um has a good hitbox as well that is, you know, um good to AD strafe with if you know what you're doing. So again, like this this is kind of the weird weird world that we are in, where some of the supports that take a little bit more skill, like Iliari and Ana, uh kinda lost more power in this current state of the game, and then characters like Moira and and the current moment, the current iteration of Life Weaver definitely are a lot more stronger than the characters that take more skill. Kiriko remains largely the same. She transitioned into all of this pretty well as well. So that's all I have to say about that. So Anna's biggest problem right now is the game is kind of all about speed and she struggles to kind of keep up with everything that's going on. It certainly doesn't help that some of the best supports in the game right now are Lucio and Moira and because of their ability to quickly dive onto a target alongside divecom centering around either Winston or Doomfist or even a Wrecking Ball now that he's somewhat uh, a little bit better than before. You know, you have like DPSs like Tracer and Sombra just isolating the backline and completely eradicating um, Ana from existence because she just cannot respond. And it's very, very depressing. In fact, uh, especially when it comes down to Ana's ability to dual targets, this is ridiculous. Even though I'm going to show you guys a clip right now Look at this clip right now, I'm going to slow it down. Even though I win this duel, look at how many shots it takes me to really damage this venture and then secure a kill. It's ridiculous. I think I had to land about four to five different shots and then the anti-nade to even confirm a kill. Now, you know, my this is just one instance. I've been running into this in different duels as well against Genjis, against like, you know, tanks that like, honestly, if a tank basically dives you, it just feels like GG if you don't have somebody else helping you out. Ana feels really, really helpless and it's just not good. And whatever Ana can do right now, like Ana's strength is that she brings the anti-nade, but the anti-nade is kind of pointless because of the bigger HP pools and people are not dying as fast as before. And then you flip that over to the other side, uh, you know, not to mention that a lot of the tanks uh, got abilities that increase their health bar. So even if they get anti, usually anti is very effective on tanks. The tanks just have these, but like, for example, if you anti Nerissa and then she fortifies and gets the overhealth, if Ball gets an overhealth, you know, this is where it just kind of becomes a little bit more difficult, you know, to keep up with, you know, everything that's going on. And that's kind of why Anna sucks right now. She also doesn't work that well against characters or compositions uh, like Ursa over there. Again, she she can just get run down really easily. And her strength has always been to be able to bring a lot of healing into the game with a good pick potential. And right now her pick potential has been hurt quite a bit and her overall healing potential has been hurt quite a bit. Again, if you want more healing right now and survivability, Moira and Life Fever are very good characters to play. Life Fever has definitely gotten a bit of an overbuff in my opinion, and he's certainly gotten much stronger on this patch, and he's a pretty decently good support to have alongside another main healing support. It's ridiculous how good he is. Also, he can survive a lot of situations. It's really ridiculous. I talk about Life Fever in another video, but 
Moving on, so when it comes down to, let's say you want more healing and survivability, let's take Moira in this case or Kiriko, both of them have good DPS potential, much better than Ana's DPS potential, okay, especially for Moira, it's extremely forgiving with, you know, the way her uh, beam, tether, tentacle, suck works, whatever you want to call it, her healing is a lot easier to do and apply, the ultimate is just almost a guaranteed teamfight win if you have teammates with a functioning brain cell, so Ana, in general and in comparison, just is struggling to compete with her main healing counterparts. And then on the flip side of things, if if you know if you're trying to make up for the fact that you can't heal that much with her damage, well, I already talked about the fact that her damage compared to everything else really sucks. And this is where I come down to suggesting my buffs for Ana. Is personally, I do fundamentally believe that we should put more power in Ana's primary weapon, the actual sniper rifle. The healing rifle or whatever you want to call it and this is and i don't agree with the nade getting more power because again it's a cooldown it's a very high cooldown and once it's used it's pretty much ggs rather i do think ana is a character where you want to put a little bit more oomph a little bit more power in her ability to do damage and her ability to do raw healing from just that sniper uh, rifle alone i do would like to start small and if it's needed work our way up maybe increasing Ana's damage and healing by 10, 15, or even 20, willing to experiment with any of these numbers, and, you know, combine that with the nade and things like that, see how things go for Ana, and if she feels better, especially, I would say, she needs help in the damage department, like, it feels really bad to try and take a duel with Ana, it feels more often than not like you are going to lose a duel on Ana no matter what, and that is why Ana just feels really terrible to play right now. Alternatively, what I would also like to see is if they don't want to do something like that, then I do firmly believe that in the current game environment, Ana can see a little bit more power going into her cooldowns. We can reduce the cooldowns for them, not by too much, but just enough to where they're, they're a little bit, you know, they come online more often. Perhaps we could increase uh, the way sleep works. We can, you know, increase the anti nade effect. Uh, again, uh, they're already experimenting with anti doing a heal reduction and not um, complete heal removal in the uh, mirror watch stuff so it's very interesting so i would very much like to see i kind of hate the fact that i'm saying it like this but perhaps uh, somewhat of a rework would be necessary to make Ana fit the current game environment so it's either we buff up her sniper ref which again i do believe that this first suggestion i have is the way to go is we um, take her primary weapon, increase the numbers by either 10, 15, and 20, and kind of, you know, keep a very close eye on Ana and see if she's feeling better, and go from there, or we do not do that, and we uh, uh, put more power in the cooldowns, although I don't think, again, I don't think the cooldowns getting power would be what Ana needs, because again, given how faster the game has become, what compositions are viable, and Either things are unkillable or things are so fast that you Anna can barely keep up with them. This is why, you know, I'm I'm thinking maybe the right way to go for Anna is buffing up that sniper rifle so that she can heal more and she can, you know, pump out a little bit more damage to make her duels a little bit better. I don't think anybody has ever complained about Anna's quote unquote one shot combo or Anna's ability to duel. So I do think um buffing up her numbers to the point where she can replicate what she was able to do before. I would be completely okay with that, and I have massive respect towards Ana as a character. She's been uh, one of my most played... No, actually, she is my most played support for the past five, six, seven years. And the thing I love about Ana is that everything in her kit is... Uh, well, Nade is a bit of a certain extent, but everything in her kit is basically a skill shot. She needs to aim, she cannot cheese her way, she must, you know maintain good positioning as well since she can like she doesn't have a fade or a petal or you know an immortality field and an infinite cooldown movement with the exo boots so she's definitely a, a very good very well designed character and this is why i do firmly believe that i don't think there should ever be a point in time where ana is bad in the game and like yeah you know i'm kind of repeating myself right now but put power in the sniper rifle increase the damage by 10 15 or 20 Increase the healing by 10, 15, or 20, and then go on. Because otherwise, outside of that, I hate to say it, but Ana kind of feels like a throw pick. Like, nowadays, when I get an Ana, I just kind of feel like, why? Like, what are you supposed to do? Like, you're a single target healer, and once the DPS passive gets applied, you suffer the most. And, and that just incentivizes Ana not to use the nade 
aggressively and use the nade more passively. Also, alternatively, I do believe that maybe nano boost can see a bit of a uh, ultimate charge decrease because uh, I do personally think nano boost is coming on a little bit slower. Again, that's because of the DPS passive. So that could be another thing that could help out. But I am interested to hear what you guys have to say. What do you guys think? What can we do to help Ana's current situation? Do you think that she needs a buff? Do you think she's fine? Do you think she needs a nerf? Let me know your comments down below. And as always, if you want to support the channel for free, all you have to do is like and subscribe. It helps the channel with the algorithm, helps get these videos around to newer people and older ones. And finally, if you want to support me financially, and I would greatly appreciate it if you did, then feel free to donate uh, down below using the super chat. And hopefully, we, you know, once I have a little bit more free time, I can set up the Patreon and channel memberships. With that said, I will see you guys in the next video.